May the grace and the peace of God be felt with us all this morning. It is so very, very good to be together like this. It is like we heard. We are so very, very blessed. And uh, to be together as, as a church family, I, my prayer is that each one of us <clears throat> would have come with an openness to listen. Even those of you that listen at home on your radio, that there too, this deep peace would rule. And if it doesn't, that we would be willing to acknowledge, as we heard in the testimony, that there was times when I'm just not at peace. The two songs that were, uh, were repeated, the first song, <clears throat> it is finished. In verse 4, if you remember, we sang, you know, after the first three verses uh, uh, described vividly the, 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 the battle. And then in verse 4, the fourth verse, we sang something in, the, in this likeness, and that is that I had my own battle. Not all of the uh, prisoners of war had returned. I had my own battle. And then I realized that even that battle was won. I had just made my own. And I thought, wow, that really fits the message so well. And then in the second song that was repeated, my God and I, we walk hand in hand together. And then I think it's in the second verse that we sang, we walk and talk, our voices ring with laughter. That reminds me of a story that I probably have shared before. There was a, there was a couple who were, were uh, dealing with marital stress and marital problems, and they went to the doctor. And the doctor said to the man, after, di- after listening their story, and the doctor said to the man, well, if you want your marriage to start a work, here's my advice. And the, the man is with hope. Finally, we'll have something, and it's going to work. And the doctor says, from now on, when it's evening time, you take your wife, hold her hand, and walk along the walk and look at the stars. And the man said, and that's supposed to help her marriage? And the doctor said, yes, that's what you need. You need no pills. You need no medication. In fact, you need no counseling. You need to realize how great your God is. Our message today is around the subject of peace. If you will, turn in your Bibles to John chapter 14, and Cordell already read the verses that just went so very well with the message that we are going to have, the uh, Sunday school opening that Cordell did here. While you turn to uh, John chapter 14 and verse 27, and those of you that are at home, please take your Bibles and open it up to to, uh, John 14 and verse 27. Now, before we read the verse, I want to explain to you the, the, the content or the intent of this subject of peace. We have to realize that there is different versions of peace. We live in a country where we say we live in peace. There, there's no fear. The country is well governed and, uh, and, you know, we live in a peaceful country. That's one version of peace. That's not what we're talking about today. And then there is another version of peace, and that is simply us coming together here. And uh, well, we, are, we'll, we will touch on that, but it's, there's no fighting. We don't need to be afraid. Or at home, in your homes, you have peace. There's no fighting. I trust there's no fighting. But those would be more as physical peace. We could lose that too, where we would lose what I call, in this case, physical peace, which would mean that you and I would have to hide, we would have to run, we would have to to keep our distance from certain areas because of the, um, the lack of peace. Now, if you are in John chapter 14, the verse was already read, so it's good. It's a repeated verse. John 14, verse 27. Who of you volunteers to read the verse? Read it loud so that everybody can understand. Byron, will you please stand and then the people can hear you better. Does anybody have the verse in German ready to read? 
Johannes, the 14th chapter, the 27th verse. Somebody will start. Yeah, plot each, that's fine, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. So, the verse says, peace I give unto you. So if somebody gave me this bottle of water, and I now take it, and I have this bottle of water. Now, you might not see it, but we all know that I have the bottle of water. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how thirsty I become. It doesn't matter what I think of it. The fact is that I have water with me. I can be running around. I can get very thirsty. I can get devastatedly thirsty. And I can start to, uh, to uh, panic because I'm so thirsty. But I still have water with me. When you look at this verse, in John chapter 14, verse 27... As I prepared and as I prayed about this message, I want to challenge us this morning, and I wish that every one of us would be humble enough to face your own self with truth. The question today to us is, do you believe this verse? There's no trick in this question, but the question is, do you believe the verse? Even if I carry the bottle of water, there's a good chance I'm still thirsty. Even though you are lacking that peace, it is still with you. On a good day, it's summertime, and... uh, the children or the wife, they had planned to make the garden. But it's definitely a very dry time. And so your wife or your sister comes to you to the house or to the shop, wherever you are, and uh, they say, Dad or big brother, there's no water coming at the end of the hose. We cannot sprinkle the garden. It's hot. We need water in the garden. Obviously, you would ask the question, well, did you connect the hose to the, to the valve, to the faucet, and did you open the faucet? And then your sister says, yes, I have checked. The hose is connected to the, to the water faucet, and the water faucet is open. But there's no water coming at the end of the hose in the garden. What's the suggestion you would have for your wife or for your children? Check the hose. Exactly. When Jesus says he gives you peace and you are sitting here today without peace, there is still peace. Your, your brother, your, your, your son can tell you, well, there's water coming into the hose. And you would argue back and you would say, but there's nothing coming to the garden. That's a fact. But it doesn't mean that there's not water at the faucet or at the hose. There's a problem. Now, here's the good news. The problem is of such that you and I can fix If we are sitting here and we are feeling empty, angry, depressed, or whatever our situation is, that problem, there's a solution for that. It's right within you. You don't need to go to a doctor. You don't need to find another bottle of water. You don't need to connect to a different different line. The solution is within us. And so the question this morning is, do you believe this verse? I don't know that it would help us anything if I would ask you to raise your hands if you believe this verse, but I want every one of us to do personal business in our hearts. And I want you to be honest with you, even though you would have to say, no, I don't believe that. Because there is people 
And I think there is people in this church this morning that do not believe that verse, even though it's written in the Bible. But yes, do I believe God's word? Absolutely, that's what we say. But the, the honest reality is that no, we do not believe all of God's word. There's pieces that we have chosen not to believe. And that is a very sobering reality. Okay, the topic. <clears throat> now I'll give you the topic of the message. <clears throat> this today is a topical message. It's an applicational message. So uh, bear with that. It's easier to understand <clears throat> than some of the other message, messages that we preach. The other messages are very important because they will give us more Bible knowledge. This is more addressing a subject. And so the topic today is depressed or at peace. One of the two. <clears throat> there's a few different kinds of depression, probably several kinds, and I'm not going to go into that, and neither do I understand all of that, so please bear with me in that part, but I'll, I have categorized it in two different ones. There is such a thing as simply a physical depression. It would maybe called clinical or um, chemical imbalance, uh, those things are just as real as that your head aches or that your tummy aches or that your, your blood pressure is too high. There's no spiritual problems to that. You know what people will simply face, and that's called, in, in the medical world, it would be called a chemical imbalance. <clears throat> so that is, sometimes you and I just rise up in the morning and we feel depressed. There's nothing wrong with that other than you, you can take control of that, but as in the sense that you have made wrong choices or anything like that. Then there is what they call mental depression. Uh, that is due to a wrong thinking pattern. So we can be born again people, we can be totally healthy as far as physical concern is, and yet we can still be very depressed. That's very sad, but that is what we can be. All of us can become depressed mentally in this year. Many of us will probably be challenged to become depressed. Some of us might have been depressed, mentally depressed. <clears throat> How do I know whether my depression or my uh, anxiety, or I, I'm just calling it depression today, <clears throat> How do I know whether that is a physical problem in me or whether that is just a mental thing? And due to my men mentality, I am depressed. Here's a few little <clears throat> hints. Now, some of this is very, very complicated and we're not going to get into all of that. But to scratch the surface, <clears throat> if you and I are dealing with physical depression... <clears throat> due to physical ailments, chemical imbalance, in all of that, we can still enjoy a peace with God. It's a challenge, but you can do that. That peace of God is your number one thing that you need to overcome that, although you need to go to the doctor and you need to get medical help. But that peace with God is the first thing we have to look for. <clears throat> Mental depression is based more on how I feel. I base everything how I feel, and when I feel bad, then I just am depressed. You base your feelings and your thoughts very often on a lie-based base. Mental depression could be called a lie-based mindset. That is where you do a lot of thinking that is based on lies. And as Christians, this becomes very critical that we know how, where we stand. <coughs> now back to our uh, text verse, as we read, it says, peace I leave with you. I'm using the bottle of water today as a symbol of peace. Jesus comes to you and he says, peace I give to you. That is what you and I, we all receive that when we became his children. <clears throat> whether we understood it, whether we felt it, but we all receive that peace. 
But it's amazing what he says, and that is, he also makes the example, not like the world giveth, give I unto you. And then he has something there, and he gives it into our decision. Let not your heart be troubled. Huh. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus gives you peace, and then he says, now it's your choice whether you want to be troubled or not. And then he has another thing that he gives us, and that is, neither let it, that's your heart, be afraid. So I'm going to give you that peace, but if you want to, you can still walk out and be troubled, but that's now your decision. That is what we want to talk about this morning, what we want to dig into. There's choices we can make. As we sang in the battle, uh, in, the, in the song of the battle, that it was won. I made my own battle and realized even that is won. Years ago, I, I, uh, I was so very, very blessed when, I, when it finally clicked in my mind that in the package of becoming a child of God, there is full victory. Victory. All of the victory you and I will ever need is within you. The power to have that victory is all within us. There's nothing more that we need than what we have if we have Jesus. <clears throat> all these under, other things, you know, are good. But we have it there. <clears throat> so then we go to Colossians 3 verse 15. And, and <clears throat> Paul is now speaking to the new believers, a new church. And he uses this. And he says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Like that is just simply teaching people how to live. This is a counseling session. This is where you and I go to the counselor and the counselor takes all these hours with us, which is a good thing. But finally he says, let the peace of God rule your heart. Oh, now you walk home and you say, oh, I never thought about that. You know what? I got angry yesterday and that interrupted my peace. And I kept my days in anger because, you know, just how that works. And I didn't realize that three days ago after lunch when my little boy uh, irritated me, that's where I lost my peace. Some of us are here today. We might have lost our peace uh, two weeks ago on a subject when I found out that my bank account is way too low. It doesn't work. You know, we... we probably could all trace it back to where we lost our peace. This morning, I woke up and I was depressed. Not very depressed, but, you know, so that you are aware of that at least. And so I had to figure out, what's the problem here? I wanted to get out of bed. I needed to get out of bed really early. And so due to us being gone, I guess the alarm clock was turned off. And so there you go. That's a bad start for the day. And then there was another thing that bothered my mind, and that had to do with some of the other things that are out of my control. And so they started to become like a heavy cloud. And you're just, you know, you're just barely into that. Now, I think that was the proper morning to have that feeling. Because I was going to preach exactly on how to deal with these kind of things. And so, okay, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank you for making me depressed today. And so, uh, because there is a way through there. I can now choose whether I want to let the peace of God rule my heart or whether I want to let it rule my heart that I couldn't get out of bed on time. And yesterday we had a few problems and, you know, nothing significant. And then these other things. I now just have a choice, and God, which am I going to choose? And by the grace of God, you know, when we sang this morning, I was just thinking, if it was only proper, I would also jump up and down like some people do. But, you know, you have to use self-discipline. We're just so happy and so on fire, and God is there. He gives us life. He gives us joy, and we can hardly contain it. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, be careful for nothing. Oh, brothers, that's exactly what it means. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. It doesn't mean like a few things. No, you and I need to learn not to be careful for anything. We're free people. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. My God and I, we walk together. We, our voices ring with laughter. God knows all of my needs. God knows my, my, uh, my struggles. He knows what I'm facing. He knows about the fear that we had in the, in the Sunday school opening. We walk together. We look at the stars and we marvel. Wow, life is good. You know, I can actually start to respond to my husband. I can be the, the husband to my wife because 
because I realize I'm a free person. Can forget my care. And then he goes in verse 7, and the peace of God. Oh, that's a result of verse 6. Brother and sister, I want you to take that very closely to your heart. Verse 7 is a result of verse 6. If verse 6 is lived out, verse 7 will follow. We don't need to worry about verse 7. We need to be clear that we follow verse 6. And then it says in verse 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Yeah, it never made sense until I come, came to peace. And it still doesn't make sense. We're just so, we never thought it would be this good. It says, And the peace of God which passeth understanding shall keep you, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And now we have Isaiah 26, verse 3. And I'm asking you today, Isaiah 26, verse 3 is a verse that is true, okay? That verse in the Bible means exactly what it says. Whether you believe it or not, but that's exactly what it says. And wherever you sit this morning, will you please look at Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, and it's the word of God. And God says this, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind, there you go, that's the mind where you and I do the thinking, right? It speaks of perfect peace, and I'm glad this is not the new 2020 magazines that we can get today, of all the the, uh, psychological knowledge that people have. This is simply Isaiah 26, verse 3, thou will keep him or her in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusteth in thee. The brother tells his sister, you know what? If you will remove all the kinks out of that hose, you will have lots of water in the garden. And the sister turns around, no. I don't think, I have never experienced that. It always, at its very best, best it just drips a little bit. And the brother says, there's 40 PSI at, the ho- at, the, at where the, 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 the water enters the hose. If all the kinks of the hose will be moved out of the way, you will have 40 PSI. That means a lot of water in the garden. But sister says, no. It was never like that with my mom or my dad. It was never like that with grandparents. In fact, we as a church don't practice it that way. I trust that's not, that's not real for us. And brother says, if you will remove all kings out of that hose, that's what you'll get at the end of the line. God says, if you and I will perfectly put our trust in God, we will have perfect peace. That's the Bible. I don't know if you believe that, but the Bible still says it. I admit, I don't believe that all the time. There's just times I don't believe it. That's, that's bad, but that's just how it is. I'm working on that. I really want to work. I want to improve on that. I want to believe that with all of my heart. And then we have another verse. It's out of Psalms, Psalms 119. It's a long psalm, and we're finally almost to the end of that psalm, verse 165. We have another verse, and it's again, it's the word of God. It says these things. Great peace. I don't know what the difference is between perfect peace or great peace, or we have... Uh, The peace of God, it's all around this subject of peace, inner peace. But here it says, great peace have they which love thy law. Oh, I know that's, that might be a little bit more complicated. Uh, You know, to love God's word seems like a big, big thing to some people that we, we interact with. I hope that doesn't mean anything big to you. In fact, I hope when you think of of the word of God, when you think of getting to know the word of God, that's something in you says, yeah, that's good. I wish I could have more. My morning, my morning hours are always so short. I can spend only so much time. I wish I knew more of God's law. It says, great peace, great peace. Does this describe your life? Could you give an account of that? Do your children notice that? Great peace, great peace. Have they which love the law, thy law. We live in a time, let me just say this. I know we will be a little bit over time, but please bear with me. We live in a time where this interest in the law of God is attacked like never in history. And it's the entertainment that we have. It is so easy today to to spend your time in entertainment. On your cell phone, nothing necessarily wicked. But it sidetracks us from 
getting into the Word of God. It just does. Are you aware of this? Great peace? Are we perhaps losing great peace because I don't have that really quite straight in my life? The very sad reality is that many of God's people don't experience the peace that is in their hearts. Like I illustrate, we walk with this water. It is the mouth is dry. We're thirsting. We're yearning. We're starting to panic. What's the solution? Water? It's there. Depressed? What can I do? The power is there. Angry? Bitter? Hopeless? What can we do? The power is there. Peace is there. There's a kink in the line. You don't need to go to Christ as in that he's supposed to give you life. He has already given it to you. We don't need to go to God and ask him, fill my heart with peace because he says you already have it. I gave it to you the day you became my child. I give you peace. Not like the world gives, which is, you know, undependable. You might get the false check. My peace, my peace. <clears throat> so let's look at a little bit at, at how this works, and then we will go for lunch. But, you know, give me a few extra minutes today. Peace comes into our hearts through our mind. Let's face it. The peace that you and I have or do not have is largely because of the mind set that we have. Who trust, uh, we had that, uh, that word here. Um, <clears throat> thou wilt give him perfect peace whose mind that's your thinking pattern the thoughts which we think give or take away this peace that's where you and I come into control that's the line that's the water hose from the faucet to the sprinkler in the garden that's the mind the thoughts that we think there, they kink the hose or they open the hose. We have to watch what kind of thoughts we think. You know what? Some of us simply should change the thinking habit because we're still thinking like mom or like dad does. That's, that's a sad fact, but that's just how life can work. We are still thinking like grandma or grandpa did. That's what they call generational sins. Let's be very, very alert as we raise our children that we do not implant a thinking pattern that kinks the hose because it happens. Even though we have been given, like I already have said, given peace, following thoughts are still there kinking the hose. For example, anger. You and I, we all deal with anger. And you know, something happens and I get angry and I do something and I kink the hose. You will never, you will never do an angry deed without kinking that hose. Never. As well as you're already trained to be angry without flaring up in bad words and kicking somebody. But anger will always kink the hose. It just does. The anger, the wrath of man never does what is righteous before God, never. Let's just make clear, if we deal with anger, we got to repent of that. Anger kinks the hose. There's bitterness or unforgiveness. Some of us, oh, brother, I can tell you, that's one of those battles that I have had in my life. I never knew I would even have such a battle as that, but then all of a sudden here it was, and I realized I'm standing or I'm sitting here, and again, I'm thinking of what bad thing the people had done to me. I just couldn't figure it out. And I realized it kinks the hose. I lose my peace. You know what? I become easily irritated at my wife or at my children. And I cannot understand. And they neither can understand they. And it's because peace has been kinked. I am living on empty. I'm thirsty. And I realize I need to deal with this. If you deal with unforgiveness or bitterness or anger or many of these other things, you might not be aware of that, but you will find that you cannot really relate to your children the way a godly parent should. You cannot really relate into your, your husband or wife's relationship the way you should. It seems to be so sensitive. Your peace is somewhere is interrupted, and it's very important that we go back on the line and we find the kink, and we will find, if we are an honest, humble, seeking people, we will find the kink. Seek, and ye shall find. Guaranteed. 
There is no such a thing as that you and I need to walk through Christianity with a king toes. As much as we might say, well, that's just, I guess that's just how mom had it, and that's how dad had it, and that's, you know, just, don't ask us when on friendship. Oh, God forbid, that's a lie. <clears throat> You know, we could add more kinks. Lostful thinking. I'm looking at the wrong stuff. I have the wrong mind about that. You know what? You, you lose your peace. I do self-abuse. Self-abuse, I mean now in the area of I'm a proud person. I'm thinking wrong about myself. Or I am degrading myself. I constantly walk away from the truth. And I dwell on a lie-based truth. Maybe something that somebody told me. You know, we could, we could stretch that so long. I don't want to take too much time. Or there's worries. And some of us are really good at this. We worry and we think we care. And no, we don't. We, we actually worry and we kink the hose and we get all depressed. And, and, and we lose joy in life. The others are fearing, like we heard in the, in the Sunday school opening. And, and that was well said. Fear most of the time, or maybe I should say all of the time. It's a lie-based feeling. If God is leading you, that's all that needs to happen. There is a chance that God will lead you into something that is going to be very, very difficult. A young man told me years ago, he said, you, you fear your financial situation. And you know, we got to be wise and smart. Let's, let's not take that easy. But he said, that it's not impossible that God actually desires to lead you through a bankruptcy in your life. I mean, if God wants that, why not take it? That's another version of, of, of not to worry. <clears throat> All of these things, they rob us from the peace and eventually lead us to a depression, to depression or even to sin. Depression leaves us empty, helpless, and even hopeless. Sin fills us with guilt. Guilt and peace will never go hand in hand. If there's something in your life, maybe it's a statement you made and you feel guilty about it, don't resist that guilt. Deal with that, repent of that, and your, your kink is open and your, your peace flows again. Sin needs to be acknowledged and confessed. It is hard, if not even impossible, to reconcile two people, neighbors or brothers or even husband and wife, unless peace rules each other's heart. Now, Again, this is a wide subject. We could go into a lot of details. But that is why some relationships never work. Even though I have confessed. And the one who, con who I confess to has said, you are okay. But the thing is, there's not been, there's not, there, in, in either of the one, or maybe in the two of us, but there's not a peaceful, open, laughing relationship with God. Reconciling. Now I'm talking between husband and wife or, or between any relationships. Reconciling with the peace of God in us opens relationships. But that has to come from both sides. <clears throat> but if it's not a peaceable relationship between me and God, there will never be a peaceable relationship here. That works like that between husband and wife and some of our wives might be spending a lot of time in prayer, praying that their husband would come into a peaceful relationship or husbands pray for wives because they feel it in their marriage that our marriage is suffering because my spouse doesn't have an open line. It's dealing with something that kinks the hose. <clears throat> this works that way in church family. A relationship, a brotherhood, a church family where the peace of God does not rule. It's like a time bomb. It will explode when the circumstances will call for it. I bless the Lord with all of my heart when I think of us as a church that I do not fear that we are a church like that. But we could become that way. We could become a peaceable family, a peaceable church, a peaceable couple is a powerful couple. A powerful church, a powerful family. Now let's go to my last point. <clears throat> How can I bring my anxious heart to a peace on a daily basis? Number one, the question is, what are you thinking? 
what <clears throat> we are all facing circumstances that disturb our peace. But can you free yourself when you're, when you're agitated? Can you free yourself from disturbance? Can you free yourself of fear? Can you free yourself of terror? We should make a list of stuff. Am I free of anger? What are the feelings? What are the thoughts that you're thinking about? And you need to, to uh, distance yourself to the point where you can enjoy peace of God. Many of us tend to overload our mind. And the problem starts to rule us and it runs away with us. Because I allow the problem that is in my mind to rule me. And it's not like we heard, let the peace of God rule your heart. Some Christians are simply ruled by a problem. That's very sad. And children need to grow up under some of that sometimes. And you might say, I could never drop that. Yes, you could. We all can. We all can. By the grace of God. We have to train our thought life. We have to bring our thoughts under the obedience of Jesus Christ. As we read in 2 Corinthians 10, 15. Casting down imaginations, lie-based thinking patterns, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There can be current situations in our life that demand much be alert and <clears throat> be alert how deep you allow them to take control. A brother called me yesterday, I think it was, and he says, you know, I, I deal with him over the phone. And he says, you know what, I, I, I had good days, but today is just a terrible day. I, you know, and I know his situation. He has all, all kinds of ugly stuff to deal with. And I said, you know what, distance yourself from those thoughts. You cannot because they're starting to run away from you. It doesn't solve the problem, but you cannot deal with that. It's like your grass in your yard is 10 inches high and the lawn is big and your mower is only small. Some, they just take that mower and they just jam that into that, that lawn and they want to get that done. And soon you hear nothing but puffs and smoke. The only way to cut that lawn down is to go strip by strip and eventually you'll have it done. And you cannot overload the lawnmower. You can't. You, you cannot overload your mind. Some of us are trying to figure it all out, what's going to happen in the next 25 years. We already see how it will not work in two or five years from now. You know what? It could even be true, but it doesn't mean that it is true. But the reality is that your mind cannot take what you're trying to fill in. That's what we're trying to say. Some of us live in, in great financial stress. Maybe it's due to lack of discipline and it has brought us into big pressure. We need to take control. Maybe make a budget. Maybe back off, sell a few things. Whatever it takes, but take control. Let, your, let the peace of God rule your heart. I want to leave us with a little checklist. Come to peace in your heart at the start of each new day. Please, please. That's your first thing. If you wake up and you find, oh, I feel depressed. You might not even know why. You know what? You have the peace of God within you. You have the complete protection of God in you. It's all there. Now you've got to figure out, why am I feeling depressed? And then you locate the kink in the hose and you say, by the grace of God, it doesn't exist. It doesn't it, it won't destroy my life. We go back and we claim the victory as we sang in the song. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus simply gives you peace and says, now you look after that. Don't let your heart be troubled. That's your part. He's not going to do that for us. And he doesn't need to because we have the power that we don't need to. If you deal with fears, make sure you can commit your fears. Whether that's family, children, future, finances, whatever the fears are, we got to be able to push them out of the way so that I again can feel, uh, that I can again experience this peace. <clears throat> and then it comes to trust. Trust that he's going to lead. I don't know. I might fear. I might, I, you know, there's many unknowns. But I just trust. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, we read, whose mind is stayed in thee because he trusteth in thee. And lastly, but not least, Learn to love his word. And let me add to that. Learn to love your maker. The one that gave you peace. Do you love him? 
Like honestly, do you love him? If you do, the power is there. Can we stand and let's pray? Lord, we thank you. I know we have only scratched the surface on a subject that was very, very dear to your heart. But Lord, it's time for us to go home and to apply and to live this. I pray that you would instill in us a spirit of repentance. Oh God, many of us have failed to live in that peace. We did become troubled. We did. Some of us perhaps are troubled as we stand right now before you. Some of us might say over the last year or two, I have been troubled. I don't know God where everybody is in his heart. Perchance there's some of us that say, I've spent all of my life troubled. Help us all to personally face you in the face and claim this peace. Because God, we realize that you said you give us your peace, not like the world, your peace. Help us all to claim that and to realize the necessity of ruling or disciplining or thought life and moving out the kinks so that full pressure will come to the end of the hose and that we can be mothers and fathers, that we can be individuals who truly live in this peace and in this joy where the joy of the Lord is our strength and we move on from victory to victory. Oh God, have mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.